Sonic, the heart of your system. Alright guys, Dominic here for Kikyu, and today marks the launch of the GTX 1660. Given we saw the 1660 Ti come out last month, I think it's probably hardly a surprise to many people that today we have the regular non-Ti GTX 1660. So both the 1660 and 1660 Ti used the same TU116 GPU that was a brand new GPU made for this family. Obviously the key features being no RT cores and then also no tensor cores. The only difference between the 1660 and the 1660 Ti in terms of the GPU is that there's actually one TPC disabled. So in practical terms, that means two less SMs and 128 less CUDA cores. The other main difference between the two cards is that the 1660, while it still has six gigabytes of VRAM, that's actually now GDDR5, whereas with the 1660 Ti, we knew that was the GDDR6 memory, so we've gone from G6 to G5. Nvidia just says that is purely to get the best balance of performance and cost. Speaking of cost, GTX 1660 has a baseline MSRP of £199, so that is £60 less than the 1660 Ti. However, the card in front of me is actually from MSI. This is their Gaming X 1660, which is going to be one of probably the most expensive cards on the market, as this has an MSRP of £249.99. We're going to look at this card in closer detail later on, but right now I really want to dive into the performance just so we can see how the 1660 stacks up against the competition. So in this video we are going to be showing you guys 1080p and 1440p benchmarks. The 1660 isn't really a 4K card, but if you do want to see 4K benchmarks as well as the full testing methodology, you can find that on the main site over at kitguru.net. So then with the charts up for you now guys, the main trend we're going to see when looking at the performance of the GTX 1660, I think probably the most obvious thing to know is just how closely it actually performs in comparison to AMD's RX 590. There is obviously a bit of difference when it comes to uh, different titles. For instance, the 1660 outperforms the RX 590 when it comes to Ghost Recon Wildlands, however in Deus Ex Mankind Divided, for instance, it swings the other way. So there is some variation between the different titles, but on average, we saw the RX 590 outperforming the GTX 1660 by a margin of just 2%. So taken as a whole, they broadly perform very, very closely. Another comparison to make is with the GTX 1060, and here we can see that the 1660 is actually outperforming that Pascal cousin, in the region of about 15% on average across 1080p and 1440p resolutions. So what that means for the 1660 is you are getting a card that is very capable of playing games at 1080p. Even our most demanding titles averaged at least 60 FPS at 1080p and are easier to run games like Battlefield 5, like Far Cry 5 for instance, they were getting closer to the 70, 80 FPS region. So if, if you just want to play eSports titles, you're likely going to see frame rates which are even higher. So at 1080p, it's a very good option. At 1440p, things do become a little bit more complicated. It's not bad, you're, it just really depends on your personal preferences. For me, some of the frame rates drop down into the 30s and 40s, so personally, that is a little bit choppy for me, so I'd rather play at 1080p and get the higher frame rates. Although, that being said, we do still see some averages in the 50 FPS region, so it really just does come down to how comfortable you are playing with the slightly lower frame rates. I did also notice one anomalous result in Middle Earth Shadow of War that I just want to touch on. You guys have probably already seen it in the charts and been wondering what is going on with that. It was simply that at 1080p, for a reason that I cannot logically explain, the GTX 1660 was actually performing slightly worse than the GTX 1060. So I, haven't, I don't know why this is, it really shouldn't be the case. I've tried reinstalling the driver, uninstalling the driver, I've tried reseating the graphics card, I retested the GTX 1060 as well with the latest drivers, nothing was changing. So. At this point, it probably is either a driver issue with the press driver we were sent for 1660, or potentially the game just needs an update. So we're gonna circle back around to that in the future and see if it is still the case. But for now, I just do wanna point that out. That is definitely stands out as an anomaly in the broader scheme of the results.
Like we said though, if we just want to broadly summarize the performance of DTX 1660, it definitely performs closest to AMD's RX 590, which we found to be on average 2% faster. Also as part of this performance section, I do want to look at the average clock speed achieved by this MSI Gaming X card. Reference spec for GTX 1660 has the boost clock at 1785 MHz. This Gaming X has actually upped that to 1860 MHz. But even then, thanks to GPU 4.0, we actually saw the card running over 100 MHz faster than that with the average real world clock speed of 1965 MHz. So that's almost 2 GHz out of the box, which clearly goes to show this is probably going to be one of the fastest running 1660s around. Taking a closer look now at the Gaming X itself, if you saw our launch day review of the GTX 1660 Ti Gaming X, also from MSI of course, you will probably recognize this card. That is because, as far as I can tell, both of these MSI Gaming X cards actually use exactly the same shroud and exactly the same cooler. That means we have this black and gunmetal grey plastic shroud. I think it personally looks quite good. It's also very colour neutral, so you're not going to run into any issues by putting this into a colour coordinated build. The two fans on the front as well are also the same, they're the Torx 3.0 model, so this is MSI's latest fan design. They measure 90mm in diameter, which again is the same as the 1660 Ti Gaming X, and they also sport what MSI calls its dispersion fan blades, where there is a slight curve in the fan blade itself, which is designed to increase airflow pressure down onto the heatsink. Staying with the front of the shroud as well, we can also see there are four RGB LED strips, actually kind of above and below each of the two fans. So this is one of the RGB zones, which is controllable via MSI's Mystic Light, and there's also the MSI logo on the side of the card, which is another of the RGB zones. So it's exactly the same as with the 1660 Ti, and overall, I think it looks pretty good. It's not wildly over the top, but if you do want a little bit of RGB, this is just gonna tick that box for you. If we look at the overall size of the card as well, it is still relatively compact. It's not gonna be as small as some of the single fan GTX 1660s on the market, but that being said, for a dual fan design, it is still relatively small. The official dimensions are 247 by 127 by 46 millimeters. So it is slightly thicker than a dual slot design, but on the whole, relatively speaking, it is still a relatively compact design. If we turn over to the back of the card now, we can see MSI has stuck with this lovely brushed metal finish aluminium backplate. I have to say this is probably my favorite backplate design of the current generation of cards. There's no RGB or anything like that. There's just the little MSI Dragon logo on the right hand side. But to me, it just looks really understated and stylish. So it's definitely a good addition. And it's also just gonna prevent any potential leaks if you have an all-in-one liquid cooler, for instance. Other things to note on the card include the single eight pin PCI power connector, which is the same as the GTX 1660 Ti, given both cards actually have the same TDP. We can also see as well the display outputs are now basically what is standard for 2019 with three display ports and then one HDMI. To open up the card, we only need to remove four screws from the back of the card and then we can get a look at the PCB. This is initially covered by this, what MSI calls its close quarters heatsink. So this is essentially a die cast metal frame which acts as a heatsink for both the VRAM as well as the MOSFETs. But once we unscrew that, we get a look at the PCB itself. And again, as far as I can tell, this is exactly the same PCB as the GTX 1660 Ti Gaming X. So that means we still have a 4 plus 2 power phase configuration. And while our VRAM is still from Micron, as we mentioned, with the 1660 it is GDDR5, not GDDR6. The GPU is still TU116, although the way to tell it apart is that for 1660 it's labeled TU116-300, whereas for 1660 Ti those chips are labeled TU116-400. We also get a look at the heatsink here. This is a reasonably hefty unit, it's not huge. It uses three nickel plated copper heat pipes, each of which measure six millimeters, and these feed through a single aluminum fin stack. Lastly, we can also see there is a cold plate which contacts directly with the GPU die. So in terms of the card's performance itself, on a technical level, I have to say it is absolutely fantastic. Starting with our GPU temperatures, we saw the card run no hotter than 63 degrees, which actually makes it the second coolest card on test today, and that is one degree cooler than the 1660 Ti Gaming X, which we reviewed a few weeks ago. 
On top of that, acoustic performance is actually even better with a peak noise reading of barely 36 decibels. So this makes it actually, by a decent margin, the quietest graphics card I have ever tested. It is. It can be sometimes quite tricky to put it into words, but really, I was sitting here, I was benchmarking the card over here, bearing in mind this is with an open air test bed as well, and I literally just could not hear the fan spinning, so it is effectively silent. Clearly, this cooler on the TU116 GPU is more than enough and the fans barely have to spin, so it is really just dead quiet. As for power draw as well, despite both the 1660 and the 1660 Ti sharing the same 120 watt TDP, we did actually see slightly lower power draw for the 1660 with the total system pulling 162 watts. This makes it between 7 and 17 watts less than other GTX 1660 Ti's that we've reviewed, although it of course does depend a little bit on how heavily factory overclocked those cards are. But while it's not a massive difference, we can say disabling that one TPC has made a small difference to the total power consumption. If we move on to manual overclocking now, I was able to add an extra 110 megahertz to the GPU core, and the memory actually took an extra 950 megahertz, which, bearing in mind this is G5 memory, not G6, is actually a very good overclock. This overclock resulted in our real world frequency peaking at 2085 megahertz, so very close to 2.1 gigahertz, although it did then average out slightly slower at 2065 megahertz, which is exactly 100 megahertz faster than it was operating out of the box. Running at this speed saw our fire strike score increase by a whopping 14%, which is a very good increase. And we also saw similar results when playing both Deus Ex Mankind Divided and also Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 1080p. And in those cases, we actually saw the performance of this overclock 1660 essentially drawing level with a reference clock GTX 1660 Ti. Temperatures only rose one degree as well with this overclock applied, which goes to show just how good this cooler actually is. And similarly, noise levels didn't even rise by a single decibel. So like I said, this cooler is more than able of handling the TU116 GPU. Power consumption did rise by a little bit more. It rose, I think it was a total of 14 watts extra with the overclock applied, which isn't much, it is to be expected, and it's still actually only barely more than a GTX 1060. So again, nothing to worry about. Wrapping up this review then, we will start by making just some general conclusions about GTX 1660 as a whole. First of all, based on its £199 MSRP, we really do have to say it probably is now the card to get if you are looking to spend £200. That's because it performs essentially on par with the RX 590, despite RX 590 starting for uh, at least £40 more, if not higher. And then if we look at comparisons with RX 580 and GTX 1060, GTX 1660 does outperform both of those cards despite costing the same, if not slightly less money. That being said, performance increase over the GTX 1060 is about 15% on average when playing at 1080p and 1440p resolution. So to me, that is not exactly a huge leap forward from its Pascal cousin. We can of course say that GTX 1660 does start for £40 less than what the GTX 1060 launched for, so that is definitely a good thing, but still, for an extra 15% performance, it is not exactly a revolution in the £200 market segment. A lot of those conclusions as well are based on the fact that you'll be able to go out and buy cards for that £199 MSRP, and that doesn't actually apply to this card. As we mentioned, the MSI Gaming X will actually set you back 249 pounds 99 pence like we said it is a technically excellent card the acoustics are the lowest i've ever heard and then gpu temperatures are also very low even when you take that into account though when you are paying an extra 50 pounds for a gtx 1660 i have to say it really just doesn't make any sense to me GTX 1660 Ti, for instance, can be found for just £10 more than this 1660, despite offering another 15% increased performance. And even then, there's still Vega 56 as well, with Sapphire's Pulse Edition, that is currently on sale for £280 at the time of filming, which again offers another step up in terms of performance. Just to wrap up this review then, I would say that GTX 1660 at its £199 MSRP is definitely a good card. It's not hugely exciting, it's not you know, a massive performance leap that we would have liked to see in this 200 pound market segment, but it is still better than what has been there before or what is currently in that price point. When you charge an extra 50 pounds on top though, 
but it's actually a 25% price hike. As good as this card is on a technical level, for a card which is very much all about value for money, it really just cannot be justified. So GTX 1660 at 250 pounds really doesn't make any sense to me when you can get a GTX 1660 Ti for just 10 pounds more. So I'm Dominic Forkitgu, this has been our launch day review of the MSI GTX 1660 Gaming X. If you like this video you can give us a thumbs up, also leave a comment below. Let me know what you think of GTX 1660, would you buy a card if it was at £199? And do you disagree, would you pay more for a better card like this with really low noise levels? Do let me know down in the comments. You can also subscribe if you haven't already and hit that notification bell. I know we're going to be looking at a cheap system, less than a grand with a GTX 1660 in it, so stay tuned for that. But until then guys, I'm Dominic Forkit Guru and I'll see you in the next video.